Japanese tanks, much like Italian tanks, they have a reputation for being ineffective, small, and easily knocked out. Certainly movies like The Fighting Seabees reinforce this idea. Hollywood has in fact largely glazed over Japanese tanks, and they appear rarely in movies, and when they do, always as mock-ups. But Japan did produce over 5,000 tanks in the 1930s and 40s, which included some comparable to Western medium tanks. From a 1940s American or European perspective, Japanese tanks were inferior, particularly in terms of armor and firepower. But Japanese tank designs were effective. Their light tanks and even tankettes in the 1930s were valuable in Japan's invasion of Manchuria in 1931 and the following conquest of Southeast Asia. Even a small thinly armored and lightly armed tank was effective against people who have no tanks, or in China's case, a few older tankettes and Panzer ones. Though the Chinese did have some success against Japanese tanks with their infantry, which included using suicide vests, just as shown in movies like The 800 or Flowers of War. The battlefields of China and the South Pacific proved to be suitable environments for tanks like the Chi Ha and Ha Go, Jungle, mountainous trains, limited roads, and monsoons which turned everything to mud meant smaller, lighter tanks were more effective than heavier ones, more likely to get stuck in the mud or sand. Furthermore, jungle combat meant tank engagements often happened at close range, so long-range heavy guns were not as important. In Europe, big tanks made sense. Engagements often took place in open fields at great ranges, requiring larger guns. Germany and Russia could also haul their tanks directly from rail networks right to the front. Any tanks fighting in the Pacific would have to be small enough to be shipped to and from islands. Shipping a 57-ton Tiger, for example, would require redesigning ships, cranes, tow vehicles, and require extensive supplies. The limitations of Japanese light tanks and older designs, such as the Type 89 I Go, became evident during the Battles of Kalkin Gol, in 1939 against the Soviet Union, where they faced numerous and more heavily armored Soviet BT tanks, as depicted in the Korean War film My Way from 2011. Japan would have more success, however, against the British, particularly during the Malayan campaign in 1941, facing mostly British armored cars. This was a rapid victory for the Japanese and one of their most successful uses of tanks, defeating a British force with a superior number of troops, some 138,000 to 70,000 Japanese. The Battle of the Philippines in 1941 would see the first American-Japanese tank battles. The superior M3 Stuart, introduced the same year, squared off with the Type 95s, introduced in 1935. The Stuart was superior in almost every way, particularly its armor. It was, however, found the jungle was a great equalizer, as it often forced tanks to engage at close range, making the armor difference negligible. The Stuarts were further prohibited by the Japanese Air Force and a lack of fuel. The majority of Stuarts in the Philippines would be destroyed by their own crews to avoid capture. The Type 95 Hago was the most produced Japanese tank of World War II. Production was started in 1936, with 2,300 completed by the end of the war. It was armed with a 37mm main gun and two 7.7mm machine guns, one in the rear section of the turret and the other hull mounted. The Type 95 weighed 7.4 tons and had three crewmen. By the way, if you're wondering how names were created for Japanese tanks, they used dates from the Japanese calendar, not the standard Gregorian calendar. The Type 97 Chiha medium tank, a light tank by Western standards at 15 tons, was the most widely produced Japanese medium tank of the war. It had armor up to 25 millimeters, considered average protection in the 1930s. 
A 47mm gun was mounted to combat tanks. Though this was a smaller caliber, it was a higher velocity gun, more effective against armor. It could penetrate 55mm or 2.2 inches of armor at 100 meters, and there were incidents of the Type 97s disabling Sherman tanks. The Sherman, of course, was far superior to the Type 97 and virtually invincible against the Type 95. Though both tanks were recorded as having disabled Shermans during the Pacific Campaign, using speed and jungle terrain to occasionally ambush a Sherman at close range, with even a remarkable incident of a round from a Type 95 scoring a hit down a Sherman 75mm barrel at Tarawa in 1943. Ultimately, Japanese tanks knocking out Shermans was a rare thing. Most Sherman tank losses were to mines, infantry, anti-tank guns, or terrain. The Sherman weighing 30 to 40 tons outclassed the Type 97 in all regards. The growing use of bazookas, and even machine guns and mortar squads, posed a threat to Japanese tanks. A mortar round alone had the potential to rattle a Japanese tank apart if scoring a direct hit. As the war progressed, Japan would attempt to upgrade their tank designs against the Sherman, but resources were given priority, rightfully so, to the Air Force and Navy. The first tank to come close to competing with the Sherman was the Chi He medium tank, but only 170 were produced. It had 240 horsepower and thicker armor than the Type 97, but still carried a lackluster 47mm gun. The most noteworthy improvement was it being the first Japanese tank to carry a radio as standard, eliminating the need to use signal flags a much-needed improvement to Japanese tank tactics. The Chi Nu was the first Japanese tank to truly outgun the Sherman, with its Type 3 75mm gun. It was designed specifically to kill Shermans. It was manufactured in limited numbers as a stopgap tank before the Chi To could be produced, Japan's most advanced tank produced during the war. It was a 30-ton, all-welded tank, with armor up to 75 millimeters thick, a 400 horsepower engine, and an impressive Type 4 75 millimeter gun, converted from a Japanese AA gun. Both the Chinu and Chi To never saw combat. Though the Chinu was deployed, it was held in reserve to be part of a mobile shock force against an Allied invasion of the Japanese mainland that never happened. Only two Chi To tanks were completed prior to the end of the war neither seeing combat. OOI Type 3 Chinu inoperable! Japan, like Germany, had attempted to create more powerful and sophisticated tanks in a last-ditch effort to defend the homeland. But Japan, even more so than Germany, suffered from shortages due to strategic bombing. In 1945, Japan was only able to produce 256 armored vehicles, all held in reserve to defend the homeland. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on Japanese tanks during World War II. If you want to expand on the subject, leave a comment. Otherwise, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.